chance to give a presentation during this nice seminar series. I'm Futoshi Yagi, and I'm talk about complete prepotential for five dimensional n equals one superconformal field theory. And this work is based on the work with uh, Hirotaka Hayashi, Son Su Kim, and Kim Yong Lee. So I have been studying five dimensional supersymmetric gate theory. And this studying 5D gate theory is in some sense controversial from the very starting point because this 5D gate theory is perturbatively non-renormalizable. In a sense that gauge coupling constant has negative mass dimension. So it becomes larger and larger when we go to the uh, uh, high energy. But uh, it makes sense if we consider like this. So 5D gate theory can be understood or should be understood as a super conformal field theory, SCFD, plus some relevant deformation. So at UB, the, we have a five dimensional SCFD. And if we give a relevant deformation at the IR, desired 5D Suzy gauge theory is obtained. But when we consider the, some specific 5D supersymmetric gauge theory, we often assume further stronger uh, uh, assumption that we assume that the non-trivial UV fixed point exists. So if we give this a uh, five-dimensional super gauge, uh, Suzy gauge theory, it implies that we are assuming that this 5D SCFT realized that UV fixed point is uniquely determined. And this is a very strong assumption, but P, uh, when we study the, uh, the many papers uh, studying this 5D Suzy gauge theory, in, implicitly or is explicitly assuming that the UV fixed point exists. And it is uh, basically the, based on the idea that the, which start, uh, studied this kind of thing, like an, by Cyberg and the non-trivial UV, he discussed that non-trivial UV fixed point for 5D n equals one SU2 gauge theory exists uh, with an F flavor up to seven. So because uh, it is, uh, when we consider the deformation from 5D SCFD to flow to 5D Suzy gauge theory, then it makes it is natural to introduce some deformation parameter uh, like M0 or MF, which is interpreted in the gauge theory side as an gauge coupling constant, like the bare coupling constant, which is related G, which is related to M0 like this, and this M0 can be also interpreted as a mass of instanton particle. And MF, uh, another deformation parameter, is interpreted as hypermultiplet masses. So in this uh, setup, uh, in order to get the uh, desired 5D Suzy gauge theory, oh, sorry, uh, M0 positive is a necessary condition because M0 is a one over G square, a negative one over G square doesn't make sense from the viewpoint of gauge theory. But still, it is meaningful to ask whether it makes sense to consider the parameter region where M0 is negative. And the answer is yes in a following sense. So M0 negative is, doesn't make sense in this uh, gauge theory side because uh, it's a bare coupling square. But from the viewpoint of the UV fixed point or SCFT, we we, the relevant deformation with negative M0, negative M0 is well-defined re relevant deformation. And if we do that, it flows to another Supayami theory or some other non-Lagrangian theory in a sense that there may not be no good gauge theory description, but still it flows to some, some theory. So from the viewpoint of UV, the negative M0 is a meaningful deformation. So, so it means that uh, we, it is very natural thing to consider the whole parameter region of M0 instead of limiting ourselves to some uh, narrow, uh, specific parameter region to go to specific uh, gauge theory. So the theme of this talk is to extend the this parameter region to all whole parameter region. So in order to study this whole parameter region, we would like to compute the prepotential of SCFT 
defined for whole parameter region, which means including negative M0, M0 from minus infinity to plus infinity. And so, so defined for the whole parameter region of the deformation parameters. And I would like to call such a prepotential as complete prepotential. This uh, naming complete prepotential is just uh, my collaborator and I made up this name when I wrote a paper. And this complete just means, uh, this complete just means whole parameter region. So I said complete because it's defined not only in a specific parameter region, but it defined for whole parameter region. And that's why we call complete prepotential. And it's a function of a Coulomb moduli, or which is a vacuum expectation value of the vector multiplet. And also depend on the deformation parameter, which is interpreted as a gauge coupling or hypermultiplet mass from the viewpoint of uh, gauge theory. So I would like to list the oh, summary. Uh, uh, sorry, I, I said summary, but th this is like a property of complete prepotential. And the, this is a property of the complete prepotential, the expected property of the complete prepotential. And the first one is just, I said just now, like defined for whole parameter region, especially the whole parameter region of M0. And the next property is that it reduces to the IMS prepotential. And this IMS prepotential stands for Intrigator Morrison Cyberg. And it is a gay theory prepotential, part of, part of, part of, computed in a part of a perturbation. So it's a gay theory prepotential. And the property is that it, the, our complete prepotential should agree with the IM, this IMS prepotential inside the parameter region for the gay theory. So if we choose some parameter region where the gay theory description is reliable, our complete prepotential reduced to the IMS prepotential. For if we limit the parameter to the uh, some prop, uh, some specific range, it agreed to IMS prepotential. So, so, in other words, what I would like to do is to extend the parameter region of the IMS prepotential. And but if you go outside of the parameter region where the original gauge theory description is reliable additional correction may appear. So this is, and finding such correction is uh, some point of this work. And the next is to property is that it is consistent with the fiber and web diagram. In a sense that the, if we, the, it is known that the prepotent first derivative of the prepotential correspond to the monopole tension. And this monopole tension, a monopole, can be uh, constructed by using D3 brain filling some face in the five brain web. So by using five brain web, we can compare with the prepotential and five brain web. And so we, for example, when we try to compute the complete prepotential explicitly, we can read off, we can determine from five brain web. Or if we can compute complete prepotential in some other way, we can compare with five brain web and see the consistency. And another uh, property is that it uh, respect the global symmetry, uh, the global symmetry of the SCFT. Uh, and this global symmetry of SCFT is often larger than the global symmetry of the gauge theory because it is natural because the uh, gauge theory is obtained by the relevant deformation, like a mass deformation of instanton particle. If we do such deformation, this deformation may break some of the uh, global symmetry of SCFT. So in other words, uh, the, the global symmetry of SCFT may enhance from the view uh, compared to the uh, gauge theory global symmetry. And our complete prepotential respect this in enhanced global symmetry realized at UV fixed point. And next one is that it is consistent with UV duality. This UV duality means that, uh, sorry, I, I forgot to say, mention UV duality at this stage. Uh, some gauge theory and other gauge theory 
may uh, may have a same identical UV fixed point. In this case, it is I would like to call UV duality because it becomes identical at UV. So, so and this complete prepotential is expected to be consistent with UV duality in a sense that if we choose one parameter region, it, it re, uh, I, uh, complete prepotential reproduce IMS prepotential for one gate theory. If you choose another uh, parameter region, then it reproduces IMS prepotential with the other gate theory. And this is uh, somehow the consequence of one that it reproduces IMS prepotential. So if you have, if the some a super conformal field theory have multiple case theory de de description depending on the parameter region, it should reproduce all. And finally, I uh, discussed that this complete prepotential can be derived from network of partial function, 5D network of partial function compactified on S1. And so I briefly explained all this uh, property, but this explaining this property more in detail is the point of this seminar. So from now, I would like to explain these property one by one. And this actually, this slide actually works as a plan of this talk. So I will explain from one, now I explain this one and then next two, three, four, five. So from, from now, I, I would like to focus on the, the reproduction of IMS prepotential. So, I will start this uh, section, but if you have question, please, I'm glad to answer. Uh, sorry, Futoshi, I, I didn't yeah. understand. You, you missed the UV duality. Yes. Is it is different from the M0 being negative? You consider the two things the same? Oh, uh, yeah, well. Oh, no, it's written. Sorry. No, no, it's just. Yeah, UV, yeah, UV duality. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, UV duality is like this. Yes. So if you choose this, then we obtain this. If you choose this, if we obtain this, then I call this and this two gauge theory as a UV dual related by UV duality in a sense that it becomes identical at UV fixed point. By the way, I call the UV duality because it's slightly different. This is a different than cyborg duality. Cyborg duality is IR dual, two different theory defined that UV region is flow to the identical IR fixed point. This is uh, IR duality. Cyber duality is IR duality, but this uh, 5D duality is a UV duality. It becomes identical at UV fixed point. So is it okay? Yeah, okay, thanks. Okay. Other question? Okay, so let me continue and I will explain the point that, that the, our complete prepotential reproduce IMS prepotential. So before going to the complete prepotential, I would like to briefly review IMS prepotential uh, studied by Intrigator, Morrison, and Cyberg. Uh, sorry, I have uh, a question. Oh, yes. Uh, uh, sorry. Uh, what, is, what is the value of M0 in five dimensional CFT? At UV fixed point? Uh, at UV fixed point, if, of course, it's zero. So, at zero? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. So, yeah, this, we sh so because, I, uh, so this M0 is like a mass parameter. So, uh -huh. all the mass should be zero in the CFT. Uh -huh. The CFT should not have uh, a mass parameter. If you turn on mass parameter, then it flows to some mm -hmm. other theory other than original CFT. Oh, okay, okay. The situation. Thank you. So uh, I would like to briefly review IMS prepotential. This IMS prepotential is a one loop exact in a sense that the 5D n equals one superior mu theory is a supersymmetric gauge theory. Uh, this, uh, uh, sorry, like, like effective coupling is computed one loop exact. So. If, if you compute two loop, three loop, four loop, and so on, it's, it vanishes only one loop. So this one loop, uh, although this IMS per potential is just have a one loop contribution, but it is discussed to be exact. And this uh, prepotential is a, like, like a locally cubic. So cubic, pre, uh, cubic, so it's a very simple polynomial up to cubic. And this, cu uh, 
at most cubic is a is a consequence of the, the gauge invariance. So although it's a polynomial, but its coefficient of the polynomial can change depending on the parameter region. And this gives a non-trivial structure. So this is a IMS prepotential. And as I said, the IMS prepotential consists of, a, a, is one loop exact, so it consists of classical part and one loop part. Classical part consists of gauge kinetic term and Trans-Simons term. And it, 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 it is a function of vector multiplet, and it depends on bear coupling or some other uh, quantity which is determined by the gate if once you fix the gauge group and also depends on trans level. And uh, by the way, I, I'm following the, uh, uh, okay, so yeah, yeah I, I'm, uh, I'm reviewing this uh, integrator morrison Seibert's uh, paper. And the one loop part is more non-trivial structure. It, the one loop contribution comes from the con quantum correction from vector multiplet and hyper multiplet. And it includes the absolute value cube of the absolute value. So when the inside the absolute value becomes zero, uh, from, switch from positive to negative, then at this, at this point, the coefficient of the polynomial changes. So that's, so that's what I mean by the coefficient of the parameter changes depending on whether inside is uh, positive or negative. And observation of this IMS prepotential is that this one loop part, this absolute cube part can be understood, interpreted as a BPS mass cube. And this BPS mass is a, it's given by this a BPS formula. And so because the gauge kind of, uh, so, Basically, this BPS mass is like a W boson and uh, hypermultiplet at the Coulomb phase. It, gives, it becomes a BPS particle and BPS mass is given in this formula. And so the one loop correction is actually the BPS mass given by the BPS mass and the coefficient of the cubic polynomial changes when the uh, BPS particle becomes massless. So this is a structure. So uh, as a digression, I would like to mention that the uh, BPS formula is slightly different between 4D and 5D. In 4D, it is uh, instantaneous is zero-dimensional object, while magnetic monopole is a one-dimensional object. So magnetic monopole is a particle. So BPS particle mass can be determined by electric charge, magnetic charge, and flavor charge if it exists. And so, and so, for example, we can consider something like dion, which have both electric charge and magnetic charge. But the situation is different in 5D, because in 5D, instanton is one dimension. Instanton is a codimension four object, which means the dimension one object in 5D. And magnetic monopole is two dimensional object, which means like monopole string. So in, in this case, the, uh, if we consider a BPS particle, magnetic charge doesn't appear in this formula. Instead, instanton charge appears in the BPS formula. So we can consider the particle with the electric charge, instanton charge, and flavor charge. So this is uh, some situation in 5D. So if we taking into account, it is natural to consider that the new contribution which may appear outside of the parameter region where gauge theory description is reliable, some other BPS mass, other than the, other than the double boson and hypermultiplet appearing in the Lagrangian, some other BPS particle may appear. And this BPS particle may have instant non-zero instanton charge. So what I, uh, so this is uh, some, oh, this is some uh, expected form of the new correction. Uh, outside of the parameter region where gay theory description is not available. And so I would like to consider such correction, but uh, I would like to use it for later convenience, I fix some convention. First, I choose some one wild chamber of the gauge group so that the absolute value for vector multiplet is now uh, 
removed. So there, uh, so we consider only the absolute value or BPS mass of the hypermultiplet. And also, it, it turned out to be convenient to rewrite this absolute value in terms of this uh, symbol, which I made up in this paper. And this is uh, uh, defined as a x times Dedekind theta function minus x. And it gives 0 for positive x and x for negative x. And although this symbol itself is slightly different, but this rewriting this is motivated by this paper. And this paper rewrote the, some IMS prepotential in a nice way so that uh, some uh, to clarify that what happens when we move one parameter region to another parameter region, it, it, when we consider this, this symbol is convenient. And, and I would like to rewrite write the complete prepotential in such a way in a in a form that i am is prepotential plus some uh, additional term which vanishes when m0 is larger than the other parameter and this condition means that this because 1 over 1 over g square is uh, uh, is this m0 m0 large m0 means weak coupling so weak coupling region is the region where gauge theory description is reliable so if this we go to this parameter region, then it should reproduce IMS prepotential. And it is consistent, this expression of this, the expression of this equation is consistent because if this coefficient of M0 is positive, then if, if we, and, and then, and if M, this M0 is much larger than the other, then inside this symbol, uh, sorry, it's the uh, cube. Uh, inside this uh, uh, this symbol becomes positive, then by definition, it vanishes. So it reduced to IMS prepotential. So this is the expected form of the complete prepotential. So I finished, basically finished the structure of reproducing IMS prepotential. So I go to next point, but do you have any question for the moment? Okay, maybe let's go on to the next topic, the comparison with five brain web. So I said that the, uh, in order to compute prepotential, we need to find new contribution of the form with the non-zero uh, instant on charge. But uh, because we cannot use the original gauge theory perturbative computation anymore, it's very non-trivial how to find such contribution. And one of the nice method is to find the five brain web. So PQ five brain web diagram is a, is a brain setup with a, a D five brain web consisting of D5 brain web and NS5 brain web, that, uh, sorry, D5 brain, D5 brain and NS5 brain and its uh, composite uh, bound state. So they, all, all the five brain are extending to 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 direction and localized to 7, 8, 9 direction and gives a non-trivial web diagram in five and six direction. So sorry, I break five and six. And and from the BPS condition, it is known that PQ5 brain web, which consists of P D5 brain charge with Q and S5 brain charge, uh, should be tilted in a PQ direction. So by looking at the direction, you can tell the charge of the five brain web. And when we use this PQ5 brain web, we can discuss the uh, we can construct the gauge theory and also the U CFP uh, realize that EV fixed point. For example, we consider the case where, uh, in case for rank one E1 CFP, for, for the moment, please, this E1 indicates the global symmetry of the CFP, but for the moment, please think just as a name. So we consider the CFP realized on the intersection point of 115 brain web 
uh, one one five brain and one minus one five brain. And the so this CFT is realized on the intersection point. And if we consider the deformation positive M zero, then this distance correspond to a proportional to M zero. And this can be interpreted as an SU2 gauge theory. And actually in 5D, it is known that there are two types of pure SU2 gauge theory. So, and we distinguish by saying this preset angle. But um, it, here, please just understood fr just from this figure. Like it, it is just SU2 because a 2D5 brains are coincident. If you go to Coulomb phase, we separate this 2 5 brain web um, while still fixing the external line. So, and then the each length is given by this. So this, uh, this Coulomb moduli A is determined, is, is related to the uh, distance between two D5 brain. And this M0 is the, this length, originally this length. So if you extend this square without changing the external line, we can compute the length of this part. And we, so we can parameterize the fibrin web by using the deformation parameter or Coulomb moduli. And if you compute the area of this square, then we can compute easily by multiplying two lengths. And then we can compute the prepotential uh, up to integral constant. And the nice point of this fibrin web is that we can consider M0 negative region in a very natural way. If we consider M0 negative, then it deforms like this. So now we obtain some other SU2 gate theory. In this specific case, uh, the other, another gate theory is also SU2 gate theory, but the dif difference between the previous one is that it is realized on top of NS5 brain. The pre previous example, it is realized on 2D5 brain. In this case, it is realized on NS5 brain. But of course, if you take S duality, then it becomes the usual uh, SU2 gauge theory realized on T5 brain. And then we can also compute the area, and then we, it, we find that the same prepotential is obtained. So, so although I said that the additional uh, contribution may appear, in this specific case, actually it turned out to be the real case, but in this specific case, this uh, IMS prepotential can be, uh, is available for whole parameter region, not only M0 positive, but also uh, M0 negative. But this is not always the case. Let's consider another example, which is called E1 tilde CFT. I'm sorry, I have a, a uh, question. Yes, please. Yes. Uh, this, this one doesn't seem to respect the vial symmetry, right? If you send A to minus A. Ah, uh, sorry, sorry. Uh, I, yeah, yeah, that's right, that's right. Uh, this is a, uh, e, this is like that throughout this uh, throughout this uh, talk, so it doesn't because uh, I use the convention that uh, I choose wild chamber of the gauge group, so like a is positive. So, so I would like uh, so in in my complete pre I write down the complete prepotential in such a way that it does not respect the uh, wild transformation in a sense that I already choose specific wild chamber. So instead of sacrificing the nice uh, manifestation of gauge group, I would like to make manifest the global symmetry, the enhanced part of the global symmetry. And somehow it is uh, technically very difficult to make both gauge group, gauge symmetry and global symmetry manifest. Uh, global, global symmetry means the global symmetry of SCFT, enhanced global symmetry and gauge symmetry cannot be make manifest, it cannot, or difficult to make manifest simultaneously. So I, in this talk, I completely sacrifice the wild invariance due to gauge transformation. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you for your question. So it's like this. So, and next example, 
let's consider another type of SU2 gauge theory, which is said to be discrete set angle pi. And this is a, ah, sorry, uh, maybe I should start from saying that I start from E1 tilde SCFT, which is realized by the, again, the intersection point of these four pi brains. And then if we consider the positive M0 deformation, we obtain SU2 gauge theory, but with slightly different SU2 gauge theory than before. And it is often distinguished by saying that this created angle is pi. And if we, if we go to column phase, then we can compute the length of each part uh, by using M0 and A. And the difference is that if we go consider negative M0, then the deformation is like this. So this figure does not correspond to any gauge theory. So I, I, I call non-Lagrangian theory. And if we go to Coulomb phase, depending on the parameter region where it, it is uh, larger than or smaller than minus one over two M zero. And then the, if we, A is large, then the, uh, the shape looks similar to the SU2 gauge theory case. But if it's small enough, then this type of uh, diagram appears. And yeah, so, uh, so uh, and we can compute the area of each part, the area of this square part and area of this triangle. And because we are, uh, and then we notice that the area is different. So the complete prepotential should be written down in such a way to reproduce both area. And we found a nice expression like this. So uh, if, and this is a complete prepotential expression. And this part is uh, identical to the IMS prepotential, uh, assuming A is positive. And we add further contribution of this form and up to some constant part. And this IMS prepotential part is actually the same as this uh, is basically computed from this area. Sorry. And the, uh, uh, by adding this term, we can reproduce area of the other part. And I would like to interpret this term as a contribution from instanton particle, in a sense that, that this is a BPS particle with non-zero instanton charge at Coulomb phase. And this interpretation can be also understood from five brain web, in a sense that this one A plus one over two M zero is the length of this part. So D one brain suspended be, uh, between uh, uh, between these two points uh, can be understood as an instanton particle. And when instanton particle becomes massless, coefficient changes. So this ma BPS mass of this instanton particle comes here. And then uh, this, uh, when we go across the region where this length becomes zero and go farther, the slope transition uh, the name flop transition is motivated from Calabiao, but I sometimes use for five brain web. So by using flop transition, this, this picture is obtained and then uh, adding this uh, uh, term is uh, necessary to reproduce this area. So this is the structure of a complete prepotential. So by, cons by just compute, by uh, as relating the length of each edge of fiber and web in terms of gauge theory parameter and just compute the area in a very naive way, then it reproduces a complete prepotential. So this is one of the way to compute complete prepotential in a systematic way. Can I ask a quick question? Yes, yes, please. So uh, it, this is related to the question of Andres. Uh, so if you go back one slide, so the, the term, the terms that you're adding, is it obvious that uh, they will maintain the property that the wild, the boundaries of the wild chambers are still impenetrable walls in the most general case? Uh, 
Yeah, sorry, hey, what? Hey, are, so, the so in the in the usual case, the reason mm -hmm. the, the reason for uh, restricting to one while chamber is that there is no loss of generality. If you do that, you can describe all the phases mm -hmm. as far as I understand, uh, whether they are Lagrangian phases uh, or non-Lagrangian. But uh, the terms you're adding, I'm just curious. I, I guess they don't affect this, but I'm just I just want to know if you. Uh, well, I uh, for negative a, uh, the meaning is. Uh, I see. I mean, the negative A would just be a different while chamber choice in that sense. But so that's usually okay. But I'm just curious if maybe this is not very relevant. But uh, uh, it may be interesting question in a sense that uh, because uh, the while invariance of gay theory is is becomes less manifest in this picture. But uh, I would like to ah uh, okay. I I don't know whether it helps but i tried to write some phase diagram which uh, so actually uh, there are something very non-trivial is happening in the uh, in this case in a sense that i'm considering only a positive part and if as long as we are considering the this ordinary su2 diagram i think it's uh, straightforward to interpret the negative a because uh, it just exchanges the position of upper d5 and lower d5 but even if you exchange the position that nothing happens so the while invariance here is non-trivial but if you go to this phase it becomes much more non-trivial what happens in the negative one but i would like to just interpret that the same copy appears here and still uh, gauge uh, while while invariance is preserved, but this uh, 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 so I would like to answer yes, but it's difficult to tell how to discuss this thing. F for the moment, I'm just considering the the parameter region where of this region. So uh, by the way, uh, I said that the uh, I consider a positive, but in this in some specific region, the parameter region is the lower bound of A becomes larger than A equals zero. Because if we shrink this triangle, we cannot go further. So there is a lower bound which is more above zero. So actually this parameter region is, have a, so is a very compl complicated issue. So, but uh, what I would like to consider is that, uh, uh, let me answer your question in another way. So from the gay theory point of view, the, this uh, while invariance of a gauge group is of course important. But if you consider the whole picture from the viewpoint of SCFT, on top of SCFT, the, there is no intrinsic gauge group. And only if we go to the IR, then a gauge group, a gauge symmetry appears. So in this sense, uh, if we would like to consider from the viewpoint of SCFT, it is natural to use a convention where one value of parameter corresponds to one vacua, or one vacua is corresponds to one parameter. So also in that sense, it is natural to limit ourselves to one well chamber in such a way that uh, one value corresponds to one vacua. So yeah, I don't know whether this nicely uh, answers your question, but yeah, this is what I'm thinking. No, oh, thank, thank you. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Thank you for your question. So, so do you have any other question? So now this relation with fiber and web is over, and now we I go to global symmetry. Sorry, but may I ask after your flock transition? After your flock transition in that yes, case, yes. you have no Lagrangian interpretation, right? But you, but you have the prepotential. That's right. Can you interpret whether the um, the diagonal segment that you've created from the flock 
whether it can host a, a PCOM, uh, some sort of instanton, not a D1, but maybe some SL2Z uh, rotator. Well, you, you can consider, also in this phase, I think you can consider some two, uh, one comma two, uh, uh -huh. Is one comma two string inside this one comma two five brain or something like that. So we can consider such BPS string, and it corresponds to instanton particle in this phase. So this after slope transition, this becomes this. So yeah. I think corresponding BPS particle with this mass also exists in this phase. But I don't know whether it's proper to say instanton or anything because instanton. When we say instanton, I, what I have in mind is a gay theory description. So I don't know what to call in this phase. String, string instanton. Yes, yeah, <laughs> some, 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 some kind of BPS particle. Yeah. So I, but I agree that the corresponding BPS particle also exists in this phase, although there is no gay theory description. OK, thank you. OK, thank you. So this is a, I need to, so, the next topic is to, that the global symmetry, in a sense that the the uh, uh, the this uh, complete prepotential is invariant under the wild group of the global symmetry of SCFT. So, as I said, the the global symmetry at UB fixed point might be larger than the gauge uh, global symmetry of the gauge theory realized at IR. For example. SU2 gauge theory with NF flavor, naively it has a SO2NF global symmetry, and it is not discussed that there is additional U1 symmetry with, uh, called instanton, uh, uh, whose charge correspond to the charge of instanton. So instanton, uh, the corresponding to instanton charge. And, uh, at, but at UV fixed point, it, it is discussed to enhance to E and F plus one. This E and F plus one, uh, as for E8, E7, E, E6 is some very famous exceptionally group. And E5 and E4 are defined by removing the node from the left one by one and interpret. So if, uh, for example, if you remove, starting from, uh, if you remove one node from E6, then what we obtain is this thinking diagram, which is SO6, SO10 and so on. And so in this way, we can define E up to E1 to E8. And E1 and E1, E1 tilde and E1 is actually the same, the uh, symmetry which I mentioned previously. So, and it is uh, known that IMS prepotential is invariant under the wild group of this SO2NF, but it does not respect the enhanced part of the symmetry, but this is because IM's prepotential restrict the parameter region. For example, if we consider E1 symmetry, E1 symmetry corresponds to the change where M0 goes to minus M0. And so, and that's why the usual uh, gauge theory prepotential does not respect the symmetry because we are usually assuming M0 positive, but in, in, my, uh, in, our, uh, in this talk, I also consider that uh, negative M0. Uh, so did you, is, is any questions about this point or not? I think Takeuchi-san, you, you, raise, you raise your hand or not? Sorry, I, I, is someone talking? Uh, no, no, no. I didn't. Uh, 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 sorry, I have no intention to raise my. Ah, uh, okay, 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 okay. Uh, fine, yeah, that's fine. But a uh, question is always welcome anyway. Okay, thank you. So uh, this is a one. But the uh, non-trivial point is uh, discussed by this Hanani Harani Hanani Cole is that this E1 symmetry, while reflection of E1 act Coulomb moduli in a very non-trivial way. This is a little bit amazing at first sight because uh, A is a gauge theory frugacity, M0 is a global symmetry frugacity, why global symmetry act on Coulomb moduli. But actually, 
it, this can be understood f by studying the five brain web in detail. And it turned out that this uh, combination invariant under this E1 is this combination. So if we use this A tilde, then E1 case, uh, the, I said that the, uh, this IMS prepotential in this case, in this specific case, IMS prepotential is valid for whole parameter region. And in order to see the wild uh, symmetry under E1, we need to use this A tilde convention and then uh, up to the constant, this part becomes invariant under M0 goes to minus M0 because now uh, M0 appears in the form of M0 square. Uh, I am assuming that this constant part, this discussion is, uh, my, my method that cannot determine the constant part because uh, I always compute the area, first derivative. So uh, I, uh, in, uh, the constant part I always ignore. So it is important to introduce proper uh, parameter to see the wild transformation. And if in this wild transformation, uh, uh, wild transformation means a wild group of uh, uh, Lie group uh, uh, symmetry. And next we consider the one flavor, which is the E2 global symmetry. E2 is uh, like uh, SU2 cross U1. And X, X is the fugacity of SU2. Y is the fugacity of U1. And the symmetry of E2, Y reflection act X as X to minus X while Y is still Y. And if this part, when we re rewrite uh, the IMS prepotential in terms of this new variable X and Y in such a way to see the SU2 cross V1 structure manifest, then we notice that this new term is necessary to make whole uh, expression invariant under Y reflection because X becomes minus X. So if we have this term, then as a total, it becomes invariant under Y reflection. And adding this term, by adding this term, I confirm that this complete prepotential defined given like this also reproduce the area computed from the fibrin web. So this Y, ref uh, y, uh, y reflection symmetry is also useful to determine how the complete complete prepotential should be. So, because if uh, of course uh, just by using fiber web only, without even caring the global symmetry, in principle we can determine. Everything. But if we increase the number of flavor, the number of terms, number of uh, separate uh, uh, classification of the region becomes more and more complicated. So using global symmetry becomes very uh, useful. And by using this uh, uh, EN plus one global symmetry, we could determine, uh, combined with the uh, IMS prepotential condition that it reproduce IMS prepotential in the weak coupling region, we could determine the complete prepotential for rank one SCFT with ENF plus one global symmetry, which corresponds to SU2 NF flavor. And for example, if you write down the uh, complete prepotential for NF equals to seven explicitly, we have a two, 248 terms, which uh, correspond to uh, uh, the representation, a 248 dimensional representation of EX symmetry. And only the term which does not include M0 correspond to the IMS prepotential. So, so by using, uh, now I explained how to make E, uh, uh, and of course, uh, as I mentioned before, it is important to use the invariant combination of A instead of original A, it is important to use the invariant combination of Kulo moduli. And this is a way to make while invariance manifest. So probably one of the reasons, uh, so IMS prepotential was known from the old days, but why, one of the reasons why people didn't write, uh, and also, uh, I mean, prepotential was known from before, and EN plus one 
while uh, symmetry is also discussed from before, but why this kind of expression didn't appear until recently? One of the reasons is because they didn't consider this A tilde very carefully. And of course, another reason is that they do not want to consider the outside of the parameter region where M0 negative and so on. So this is a, a, prop, a point of global symmetry. And now, I, I, is there any questions? Now I go to the next topic. Is there some regular way to write down this modified action of whale group? Modif I mean, how, how to modify? Is there a systematic way to understand how to modify action of uh, gauge group and invariant, this uh, correct invariant uh, variables? Ah, uh, uh, maybe you are talking about this, how to determine this. Uh, yes, and uh, the action of the whale group, this modification, this shift which appear in the action. Ah, uh, I see. In this specific case, uh, how, yeah, uh, well, uh, it is uh, non-trivial, but uh, how I, oh, this is uh, actually based uh, another paper which I wrote, but, uh, for example, how I determine this uh, for pure SU2 case is that by observing the, that this, this is actually the, what should I say? Uh, if you consider, if you rotate this uh, picture 90 degree, then it also gives the same shape, but this length is exchanged. And somehow, uh, the the Aharoni, Hanani, and Ko uh, discussed that this exchange these two parameter uh, gives the uh, is the can be understood interpreted as the uh, while reflection of E one. So if you uh, rewrite this two a becomes half m zero plus two a and half m zero plus two a becomes two a by solving these two equations equation, it, 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 we obtain that M0 becomes minus M0, and A, is, A becomes like an A plus half M0, and so on. And so, uh, we, we, this kind of, uh, 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 this kind of uh, argument can be extended to higher flavor. For example, if you have a full, uh, full flavor like this, then we can consider the reflection to, uh, uh, I don't know whether reflection or rotation, which is better, but for example, we can consider the reflection and then this parameter is mapped to here or this parameter, uh, this length is mapped to this length and so on. So we will obtain the map between the original one and reflected one. And if you solve this uh, Z2 reflection, we obtain the enhanced part of the global symmetry plus non-trivial action to A. So then we can, we know how A, Coulomb moduli A is acted on by the wire reflection and we can determine the invariant combination. So this is how we determine the combination. But this is very non-trivial uh, observation. And this will amount to one more talk. <laughs> Uh, Thank you. Uh, may I ask a question, please? Yeah, please, please. Uh, for this new uh, complete superpotential, uh, sorry, new uh, complete prepotential, uh, suppose you apply it to other gauge groups, say SU3. Yes. It can uh, give you the new bound on NF, right? Whether it's a 5D yes, yes. completion or 6D completion. Do yeah, I yeah, understand? that's right, that's right, that's right, yeah. Uh, in these cases, uh, how do you obtain the A tilde for other case? Could you always rely on the PQ web or? Ah, uh, sorry, how did I do? Uh, wait a moment. Yeah, actually, uh, uh, actually in, in SU3 case, I did some, uh, Uh, it's very complicated. Uh, uh, so let me explain. Uh, so for 
for this case, uh, uh, next in, in the next, so I will explain this uh, higher order case. So I will. Ah, okay, sorry so, to jump yeah. ahead. Okay. So uh, no, no problem. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. So for example, uh, if we consider a SU 29 flavor, and then I'm the sorry, Futoshi. Oh yes, yes. Can I ask you a question on the previous slide? Okay, fine. Why why did you remove the a tilde cube? Ah, uh, this is uh, again the non-trivial thing, but uh, we can show that in in the physical Coulomb moduli parameter, this a tilde is always positive. And physical Coulomb moduli means that uh, by, in, by solving the condition that the monopole tension must be positive. So although I originally start by saying that a is positive, in some parameter region, uh, 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 by solving this condition, we can show that A is positive if M0 is positive, but for M0 negative, A plus M0, which is, uh, ah, sorry, a, a, a tilde, uh, which is a combination of this, becomes positive. So we can show such lower bound of A by solving this condition, and which means that the area of the area appearing in the fiber and web is positive. So by, okay, thanks. yeah, so that's why we can remove this. This is always, A tilde is always positive. So yeah. Give it I just have a quick follow-up question. So yeah, yeah, if you yeah. drop that term, doesn't that affect the, the, the first derivative of the free potential with respect to that, with respect to A? No, I, I don't think so. Because even if you do this, then this contribution just gives a, a sorry, wait for me. Uh, uh, so sorry, uh, let me consider more carefully. Because uh, this is uh, just A for A positive, uh, A tilde positive, and zero for, uh, sorry, the opposite. Uh, zero for A tilde positive, and A tilde for A tilde negative. So even if you, for if it's zero, in, in this parameter region, then first derivative, first derivative is also zero. Uh, and in this parameter region, oh, sorry, it's cube. It just becomes like this. So this can be summarized as an like this. So see, so right. So at that point, it doesn't make a difference to the string tension. Also, that's right. So we can treat this symbol as it is like similar to absolute value, like, uh, oh, oh, sorry, what should I say? Yeah, so it, yeah, the vanishment that the, it, uh, if it vanishes, it vanishes even after second derivative, uh, first derivative or second derivative. Sorry, this is a... Thank you, thank you. Yeah, yeah thank you for the question. Oh, sorry, now I... So, Actually, now there was a question how to determine one tilde and two tilde. And this is very complicated, but the first thing is to compute the, the term which uh, remains in the region where A and A1 and A2 are very large. If we consider the region where A1 and A2 is larger than others, then this term vanishes and only this term appears. And originally, this term is still written in terms of A1 and A2 rather than A1 tilde and A2 tilde, because we, at this stage, we don't know what is A1 tilde, A2 tilde. But uh, then we compute the, uh, but looking at this, we try to find the way to make SO20 invariant under wild transformation. And it is convenient to consider this uh, A1, this second derivative, and then we will obtain something, something like an A plus something is obtained. And if this depends on M0, then this second derivative is not invariant under the wild transformation which act M0. So uh, unless A is also changed. So this, uh, computing second derivative and obtain some non-trivial combina linear combination of A plus some mass. And then we find that this combination 
should appear as an invariant combination because second derivative of prepotential should be also invariant. So, uh, so somehow this is a technically involved, so I didn't explain, but I hope. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. So this is how we determine the, practically determine the, how to relate A1 tilde and A2 tilde and so on. But, uh, so sorry, but the topic, the main, main theme of this, uh, slide is uh, slightly different from this. Uh, what I would like to show this in this slide is that uh, complete prepotential of uh, rank two a CFT with a so ten, twenty global symmetry flows to three different gauge group, a gauge symmetry. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, the gauge theory, and each this complete prepotential should reproduce all IMS, IMS prepotential for all of them. And unfortunately, I don't have enough time, so I very briefly say, without following very much. So suppose that we obtain the complete prepotential for the SCFT, we relate somehow the parameter in the de uh, deformation parameter of SCFT in terms of mass parameter, and also determine the A1 tilde A2 tilde invariant combination in terms of a, a Coulomb moduli of SP and so on and rewrite and choose this parameter range, then many of the, this symbol of cube term vanishes and only this term remains and it agree with the IMS prepotential. We can do the same for SU39 flavor, but with different parameterization uh, and then consider this parameter region, weak coupling region. And because we parameter, uh, parameterizing differently, the meaning of this region is different from the previous case, SP2 case. And we obtain, in this parameter region, we obtain the IM spray potential for SU3 gauge theory. And if we parameterize in still different way, then, and take the weak coupling limit for both SU2 gauge theory is weakly coupled, then we obtain the IM spray potential for this quiver gauge theory, uh, product gauge group, uh, theory of SU2 cross SU2 gauge theory. So in summary, uh, the one complete prepotential, one, one consistent expression of a uh, complete prepotential re reproduce IMS prepotential for SU2, SU uh, IMS prepotential for SU3, and IMS prepotential for SU2 cross SU2, other, uh, depending on which parameter region you choose. So this, our complete prepotential explains the structure of UV duality in a nice way. And finally, uh, I would like to, although I almost running out of time, but I would like to explain the relation between necrosal passion function. So necrosal passion function is known to be, uh, so a, a, a consists of part of the part and instanton part and if you use part of the part and take omega deformation parameter goes to zero, and it is known that the prepotential is obtained, this prepotential is for five degree theory on S1. And if IMS prepotential is a five degree theory without any S1 compactification, so IMS prepotential is uh, uh, obtained by the uh, large uh, compactification limit. And in this argument, we didn't consider the instanton part because instanton part is uh, suppressed by the instanton factor. If M0 is uh, large, then instanton factor suppress the instanton contribution and only part of the part is enough to reproduce the gauge theory prepotential. But now we are trying to relax this condition. So we need to use all whole necrosal passion function not only part of the part, but also instanton part, and do the same thing. And the claim is that the complete prepotential is obtained by the omega deformation parameter zero and the compactification limit, including instanton part. And then we obtain the complete prepotential. And additional term, uh, and as, as far uh, as I discussed before, the complete prepotential include not only IMS prepotential part, but also additional additional contribution and this additional contribution turn out to come from instanton part. So in some sense, we are considering the instanton effect of the 
5D uh, gay theory, uh, 5D SCFT. Although we, I don't know whether it's proper to call instanton effect, but it's consistent because uh, this can be understood as a BPS particle with instanton charge. So it comes from the instanton part of the necklace operation function. And basically we can summarize this limit in this form. And at this expression at first sight looks problematic because the it, it summation over all BPS particle with non-zero instanton charge. And so this term is infinitely many, but uh, if you, uh, as I mentioned before, uh, we consider the restriction that the uh, monopole tension is positive and then restrict the region of A. And then in the, in, under this uh, condition, we can show that most of the uh, uh, BPS particle, this inside this symbol becomes positive and most of the term vanishes and only finite number of terms remains. For example, for E8 SCFT case, only 248 terms remains and so on. So this is uh, what happens to Necrasso Poisson function. So because we can, uh, from Necrasso Poisson function, we can read off this Gopakuma buffer invariant. So if we know the Gopakuma buffer, set of Gopakuma buffer invariant, in theoretically we can write down the full uh, uh, complete prepotential in a formally. And the task is to check which term vanishes and which term remains in the uh, physical Coulomb moduli. So this is basically the end of this talk. So instead of conclusion, I just show the, this summary of the complete prepotential. So the, this complete prepotential is defined for whole parameter region in reproduce I mean prepotential and consistent with fiber and web, especially the first derivative reproduce the area and respect the global symmetry of the CFT. So it's a invariant under wide group of the enhanced global symmetry of the CFT. And it's also consistent with the UB duality and it can be derived from the necrosal passion function. So I stop here. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So do you have questions? Please, if you have a question, just turn on microphone. Um, a lot of questions during the talk. Yeah. So, um, may I ask a question? Yes, please. Um, so, if I wanted to find uh, the contact terms uh, in the CFT, so they, they are associated to the global symmetries. Mm -hmm. So, should I set uh, a tilde to zero or a to zero? Oh, sorry, a uh, contact term. Sorry. So there will be some, you know, uh, correlation functions of conserved currents for the global symmetry. So ah, that, that's uh, data in the CFT. Ah, I see, I see, I see. Uh, I see. I think tilde equals zero because. Ah, sorry. Wait, 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 wait. Uh... Uh, ah, I think, uh, but uh, so, sorry, I, I don't know whether I I am saying correctly, but if you would like to see the continuous global symmetry of SCFT, not only A, but also M, every, uh, everything has to be zero, isn't it? Because if, uh, in, in that case, A, A tilde and A is of course, a, identical, everything is zero. I don't know whether this makes difference. Well, but I can still compute uh, correlation functions of concert currents and their super partners in the CFT, and they will be captured by the dependence on the masses. Ah, uh, I see, I see, I see, I see, I see. I think A tilde equals zero because, yeah, actually I did, I, have, I haven't, thought of about that, but the, what I'm sure is that A tilde is the invariant combination, A is not. So from the viewpoint of conformal field theory, A tilde is much natural object and it's invariant. So I think A tilde equals zero should be the condition. So okay. it, I, I think so.
Thank you. Yeah, thank you for your question. Other questions? So is this a uh, complete pre potential can be under, so in terms of this Calabria, so you would change the Calabria, right? Once you, but this UV duality is kind of like a duality between Calabria or three, four, toric Calabria three, four. Mm -hmm. um, what, um, does it relate uh, some, whatever, some topological string amplitude or go back my buffer invariance between these uh, two? Ah, yeah. Uh, yeah, 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 yes, 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 yes. Uh, <clears throat> and can it be interpreted? Okay, so can it be interpreted some like a wall crossing? It's like because I mean it's it, it's kind of flop transition. Like once you change, yeah, it's a flop transition. Yes, yes, yes. It's a flop transition. So uh, we can uh, what should? Yeah, I think uh, actually I I don't know much about wall crossing, but I think wall crossing and flop transition is a similar philosophy in a sense that the flop transition we can flop. Uh, if we try to identify the fibrin web as a toric diagram of the Calabiao, mm -hmm. flop transition is flopping this two cycle mm -hmm. and change one Calabiao to other Calabiao. Mm -hmm. But uh, topological string, uh, there is a, something called a flop invariance. Mm -hmm. If you compute the topological string for this and topological string for this, they are essentially identical, gives mm -hmm. the identical uh, Topological string partial function. Yep. So, uh, in some sense, that's why necrosal partial function can reproduce the complete free potential. The necrosal partial function is agree with the topological string partial function, and topological string partial function is invariant under flop transition. So okay. that's why the necrosal partial function is actually available for whole parameter region, and that's why it can reproduce complete free potential defined for whole parameter region. Okay. Okay. But at the one phase, uh, it doesn't capture like a whole topological stream partition. Whereas if you go to the other side, you get uh, some contribution from some other BPS particle. Uh, well, e uh, you're talk talking about the topological stream, right? The yeah. topological stream partition function are identical. It's basically one expression. And okay. if you just know one expression, uh -huh. uh, basically it's invariant. Uh, well, uh, there is some subtlety about some continuation, mm -hmm. uh, but basically, uh, at least the main part is invariant. Um, okay. I see. Mm -hmm. Wait, uh, I just to make a comment. It's in some sense it's different from wall crossing because in five dimensions the the, the vector multiplet scalar is real, as mm -hmm. opposed to four dimensions, and wall crossing is really more a phenomenon due to the complex central charge. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much for your comment. Yeah. Maybe I should not say that it's similar. Yeah. Thank you. But I have a related question. So, in some of the geometries, can mm -hmm. be thought of as toric Calabrias, but your formalism is more general because yes. it works on the basis yes. of web diagrams, not toric diagrams. So, is there some is there some connection to what kind of M theory geometries these would be coming from because some of them certainly involve orientifolds. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. For, yeah. yeah, yeah. I think uh, fibrin with uh, orientifold, fibrin web with orientifold, we can also do the same thing, and which is not toric, but we can do the similar thing. So I think we can generalize to such case. So, and or in principle, I believe we can generalize to Calabial threefold which is not toric. Ah, so sorry, what, what, what was the question? So, no, that, yeah, that was just my question. I was, I was curious because, I mean, how, do, how should I think of these generalized flop transitions uh, uh, in terms of uh, the M theory geometry? Uh, I mean, it's just an open-ended question. I don't have any thoughts myself. I'm just I curious. See, I see. Uh, I see. I see. Yeah, I don't have very clear answer, but but because what I try to do is just um, starting from the SCFT, which corresponds to some singular geometry, like sing, uh, singular Calabria threefold, and consider the Keller deformation, all possible Keller deformation. And so it should be considered for non-toric case, but I, mm, I don't know what to, 
how to do it in a concrete way. <laughs> but I think it's a good point. Any other questions? I have a question. Oh, yes, please. Hi, Futoshi. It's good to see you. <laughs> nice to see you. <laughs> At some point in the discussion of the E1 theory, you dropped the M0 cube term. Ah, yes, 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 this one. And if you do that, it seems you fail to reproduce the IMS repotential uh, for positive M0. But if you include it, you break the, the vial symmetry of the SU2 global symmetry. I see, I see. That's true, so, that's true. Yes. Is exactly. it that you're not requiring the prepotential itself to satisfy the vial symmetry, just the string tension and various masses? Uh, well, uh, I, uh, yeah, yeah, as you say, first of all, this, uh, unless we throw away this M0 cube, then while invariance is not respected. So I, I'm tempted to say that the result after throwing away is correct. And then it does not reproduce IMS prepotential, but in the IMS paper, I think they said that this constant term is not very important or something. So I suspect that they didn't, their IMS prepotential is not very careful about the constant term. So in some sense, I think this is just because all the BPS observables that they cared about were arrived at by taking derivatives with respect to the Coulomb moduli. So those are insensitive. Mm -hmm. So at least in flat space, the constant term in the free potential doesn't seem to have much to do. But maybe if you think of some curved space compactification becomes some kind of FI term and then maybe it has some role to play. I don't know. Uh, I see. This yeah. has always bothered me, but I, I was also going to ask a similar question. I think, yeah, thank you for your comments. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so um, I think if you have further question, maybe you can ask in the informal uh, discussion from now. So I will stop the recording. So let's thank the speaker again. Whatever, <laughs> Thank you.